Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and on today's episode of The Complete Picture, we are going to solve one of the great mysteries of Lightroom as well as Bridge. And that mystery is, why do these two applications first show me an initial preview of my image and then moments later change the way my image looks? Well, in order to solve this mystery, we need to know a little bit about how images are captured. So I'm going to assume that we're capturing RAW files. And as we capture that RAW file, we know that a RAW file is just a single channel grayscale image that needs to be converted into a three channel RGB image. And what converts that image? Well, that depends on where you are in your workflow. If you're looking at the back of the camera, obviously the camera software has created that preview for you. Well, it's that camera preview that Photoshop or Bridge as well as Lightroom use at the very beginning when they're first displaying all of your photographs so that we can display them as quickly as possible. And then as time allows, we actually use the Adobe Camera Raw technology in order to render a high quality color managed version of that raw file. So it's the discrepancy between that original preview that the camera generated and the actual high quality image that is rendered in either Lightroom or in Bridge using the Camera Raw technology. So now that we know that, we can actually start looking in Lightroom to find out what is creating that rendering because color is actually quite subjective. And so we use what's called a profile. Now, the profile that we use, you can access it in the develop module. So while we're looking at these three images and I've got this third one selected, let me just tap the D key so that we go over to develop. And you'll notice here that I've scrolled all the way down to camera calibration. Here's the profile that I'm talking about. Now this profile was designed to actually create a scene accurate rendition of the file. And if we think about that versus what the camera manufacturer creates, we understand why people always ask us the question like, what's happening to my images? Because typically, the original preview that you see, it's had a little bit of saturation or vibrance added to it. And it's also had a tone curve added to it in order to add contrast to the image. And that's really smart of the camera manufacturer, right? Because they want the image to look good right out of the camera. And for most people, a little added saturation, a little added contrast is a really good thing. However, we also have to keep in mind the professional photographers who might be photographing catalogs. They might be photographing clothing and they need to make sure that the clothes that they photograph or the products that they photograph are the same color in the photograph as they are in real life. Otherwise, if it goes to a brochure or goes online, someone orders it, they order the wrong color and they're going to be disappointed. So the Adobe standard profile, what I hear most is that it is a little bit less saturated and a little bit flatter than the initial image that people see. And of course, this is very easy to change. You'll notice that underneath the profile for this specific image, I have five additional profiles. These are called camera matching profiles. And the reason that they're called that is because they attempt to emulate the settings that you can set on the back of your camera. So for example, for this camera, there is an option on the back of the camera called faithful. There's one called landscape, neutral, portrait, and standard. So if you're the type of person that's changed the settings on the back of your camera, we can emulate that so that the preview that you see in the back of the camera looks the same when we use this profile to render that image either in Lightroom or in Camera Raw and in Bridge. So let's take a look at some of these profiles. Here's the faithful profile. And you can just see how much the image changes. There's landscape. It's obviously a lot more vibrant. Here's neutral, camera portrait, and camera standard. So what becomes difficult, of course, is trying to decide which one is 
correct? Which of the colors is correct? Well, I really think that that is subjective, so it just depends on what you want. These are all starting points. And by the way, your list of profiles might be different because you might be photographing with a different camera. And if you're photographing JPEG files, all you're going to see here is embedded. So we're just going to grab the embedded profile. So you have to be shooting RAW in order to get the list of profiles, and the list of profiles might change depending on the camera that you're using. Okay, one other thing. If you do change the settings on the back of the camera to one of these standard options, you're fine. But then if you go in and customize that even more, then these aren't going to match exactly. And the other thing that's really important to know is that Adobe makes these camera matching profiles. These are not created by the manufacturer. We've actually created these to emulate the settings on the back of the camera. So what if you prefer one of these camera matching profiles over the Adobe standard? Well, you can set this up as your default profile so that all of the images that you import from now on will be processed or will be created or will display using this profile. And how would you do that? Well, you would make sure that nothing else in your image has been changed. Don't change the exposure settings. Don't go in and crop the image. Don't do anything except come in here to the camera calibration area and choose the profile that you prefer. In this case, let's say it's landscape. Then you would use the Develop menu and choose Set Default Settings. You can see why you would only want to change the profile. You don't want to change something like your exposure, otherwise every image that comes in from now on will have that exposure changed as well. Now, it's a little bit scary here, this dialog box, because it does say that these changes are not undoable. What that really means is that you can't just use Command Z or Control Z to undo that. But you could say Update to Current Settings and then go, Oh my gosh, you know what? If I zoom out on this image, I didn't realize, you know, this profile maybe makes this red too red. So let's go back and see what the standard does. Okay, that's more a scene accurate rendition. Then you can just come right back up here, go to develop, and set that as your default setting. So even though you can't use Command Z to undo, you can always change your default settings. In addition, if you're someone who likes keyboard shortcuts, you could just hold down the Option or the Alt key, and you can see that the Reset button here changes to Set Default. Now, this will work for all of the images that you import from now on, but what about those legacy images? Or what if you happen to like one profile for portraits and another profile for landscapes? Well, then you can create presets. right? So to create a preset, all you would need to do is select the profile that you like, over here on the left-hand side, you'd come under Presets, click the plus icon, name the preset, and then you would only check the calibration option. Now, I've already done this, so I'm going to hit Cancel, but we can see here's the Adobe Standard, the Faithful, Landscape, Neutral, Portrait, and Standard. So I can quickly go back and forth and apply presets to either one image or obviously I could select more than one image and I could synchronize those images. I could copy and paste my settings. I could come back here into the library module and if I had hundreds of images, I could select them all. And then look, under Quick Develop, I could come here to my saved presets. I could come down to my camera calibration presets and I could change them all at once this way. You can even, on import, you can apply the preset there if you want to. So if you happen to know, I was out shooting a desert, I want the landscape preset, you can go ahead and apply that. And there's even one more option that I need to show you, and that's underneath the Lightroom Preferences. Now I went under Lightroom. If you're on the Windows version, you would go under the Edit menu and then select Preferences. You can see here that under the Preset area, you can even make your camera default settings specific to a specific camera serial number or to an ISO setting. Now the ISO setting is more typically used for um, setting presets for noise reduction, but this camera serial number is quite nice because you can actually apply a different profile to a different camera based on the serial number. So if you had two of the same, say, camera makes, but you wanted to apply one profile to one camera and one to another, you can do that. Not sure that you would do it using the standard profiles or the camera matching profiles that we just talked about, but you can create your own profiles. The way you do that is you would just go to the Labs site, so that's labs.adobe.com, 
and then just do a quick search for the DNG profile editor and then follow the instructions and you can make your own camera profile. So if you had two cameras that you needed to make sure they were in alignment as far as the color goes, that's the way you would do that. All right, now let's close this and I just want to quickly scoot to bridge just to show you that the same settings are available if you're using the bridge to camera raw workflow. So I've got the same image here and I'm going to use this icon right here to open this in camera raw or I could use command R or control R. And if we go over to this camera icon, you can see here's my camera calibration. Here are those different profiles that we can select from. And if we did choose a different profile and we wanted to set this as our default, we could use our drop down arrow right here, come down to the bottom, and save this as my new camera raw default. Same thing goes for um, Bridge as it did in Lightroom. You want to make sure that this is the only thing that you've changed because Bridge will be capturing any other changes and if you change exposure then every image from here on out will have that exposure change. So just make sure that you've only changed what you want. Then if I come over here, if we decide instead that I want to create a preset, if I don't want to change it and make it a permanent default setting but want to just make it a preset so I can apply it to multiple images, well, come to the preset area and then just click on the new preset icon. Then select camera calibration. You'll need to scroll down here but it's right here under camera calibration. You would name it and then click OK. I've already done that. Again, I happen to name them all CM profile, which is color matching profile, which is a little incorrect because the Adobe standard one shouldn't be considered a camera matching profile. But I wanted them all to be listed next to each other in the list here in Camera Raw because you can't have the subfolders in the preset area. But once you've made these presets, and I'll go ahead and hit cancel for now, but you should know that you could select a range of images and then without even going to Camera Raw, you can right mouse click, come down here to your develop settings and then all of those presets are available. So you could batch apply your new profile here in Bridge without ever even going to Camera Raw. So as you can see, the mystery all comes down to the profile that's being used in order to create your image in either Lightroom or in Bridge. And as we just saw, there are many different ways that you can change that initial profile or make changes after the initial profile has already been applied in order to make the image look exactly the way you want it. My name's Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.